Okay, very good morning, folks. It's Tuesday, 23rd of November, and finally, the wait is over. Jerome Powell has secured a, another four-year term as the head, the Fed chair position at the Federal Reserve. So going to have a look at the charts and digest exactly how the markets reacted. So as, as you might have seen, the Nasdaq sharply underperformed yesterday, despite the initial knee-jerk reaction higher. So I'll, I'll run through some of the rationale of why that happened, why tech stocks were hurt the most, and why we saw then a bit of a continuation of the sell-off there. But ultimately, what does this mean long-term? Is this a top for equities or is this just a short-term pullback before we then resume the upside trend? And I'll go into. We're also going to talk about oil news. Quite a lot coming out, obviously, yesterday. We've seen from around this time a month ago, oil prices are down in excess of 10% or so from where we were trading. A lot of talk of pressure that the US is putting on Eastern partners about potentially tapping strategic petroleum reserves in order to offset then some of the inflationary pressures coming from high energy prices. So I'll give you the latest on that. Um, and then we'll talk about geopolitics, more tensions brewing, um, dual fog really for Biden at the moment, some more tensions with China, uh, irrespective of old friend kind of dialogue that emerged from a virtual meeting from last week, friction still pretty high on a, a potential military flexing of muscles side of things. And same case with Russia as well at the moment and the issue of Ukraine. Um, and then we'll look at the, the calendar for the week ahead. Uh, well, the day ahead, I should say. Um, not forgetting that I'm filming this uh, around seven o'clock in, in London. And actually, we've got the various flash PMIs coming out. Probably by the time you watch this, we'll already be out. Um, just for future reference, those data points, the flash readings are always super important. Uh, generally for the service manufacturing sector, they always tend to have a potential influence in the European for France, Germany to move the euro and European assets, the UK at 9.30, likewise for sterling. And then we'll get the US number, probably lower hanging fruit for the US because the PMI from the ISM really dominates on that side of the pond. Uh, but nonetheless, just, just going forward, the morning of a flash PMI, you should always have your wits about you if you're um, a participant in the intraday market. Um, but having a look at the, the overall charts this morning, and we've had a little bit of a pullback uh, of around a third of the gain that was seen in the dollar yesterday after the announcement of Powell. And so we're getting a little bit of light reprieve for the major currency pairs, euro dollar and cable just coming off their lower levels. You can see here cable just coming up to the top end of its area of kind of consolidation that was seen overnight in the APAC session, finding some resistance at around the pivot which as you can see here was also that low we printed back at the end of last week. Uh, Euro dollar, pretty similar setup uh, as well on top left as you can see, just coming back up to around that previous area of inflection in the short term price action from yesterday um, as the dollar just pushing back a little bit. Um, overall though, we did see dollar strength and yields uh, move higher yesterday. Overnight swaps jumped. Uh, would be indicative now of the market pricing in a 25 basis point rate hike from the Fed and the earlier timing of June um, meeting um, with a second rate hike now priced into November meeting of next year. Um, so some of the rationale here, just before I look at the equity reaction, is the idea then that uh, Powell is the continuity choice, but in summary, He's seen as a little bit more kind of inflation minded, albeit he's far from a hawk. He's just not as dovish as Brainard perhaps could have been. And thus then the reaction effect short term, at least yesterday, was relief first. And actually, if we think about relief, equity markets in a uniform fashion actually rallied initially, as you can see here. So that's your relief trade. I call it uh, relief and realization, uh, if you like, if you want to call it that, because then the overall trend overall on the session, certainly for the Nasdaq, has been lower after we initially shot up. So there's relief, continuity, the uncertainty is over. Uh, and even though it was a two horse race and they're fairly similar, generally, more broadly speaking, the idea is then that the kind of confirmation of it was a sigh of relief. The overall sell off then came uh, because of this more idea of the um, it means the Fed can pursue then its its current guidelines of uh, tapering. We've had lots more comments. We've had Fed member Bostic speak overnight. Um, so this was another of the latest 
Fed voting, voting members. Uh, and he said last night the US central bank may need to speed up removal of monetary stimulus in response to strong employment gains and surging inflation, allowing for an earlier than planned increase in interest rates. And remember, this follows the likes of Clarida, Waller, Bullard, all that spoke at the back end of last week. So the Fed is shifting um, and becoming more hawkish with some of the inflationary prints that we've had. And we've got things like PCE coming out this week, which of course will be incredibly important. But we have the CPI, of course, more recently at that elevated 6.2% multi-decade um, high. So the market's perception now is that the rate hike uh, kind of trajectory has got quite aggressive. For me, perhaps a little bit too aggressive. We seem to have been here again and again and again in regards to the idea of um, pricing in rate hikes too quickly. And it's almost like a knee jerk reaction to then kind of fade that pricing a little bit as the Fed are going to tighten, but perhaps not at the pace that the market expects. Um, but obviously tech stocks feeling the brunt. The Nasdaq actually finished down one and a quarter percent. The Dow was flat. The S&P was only down a third. And this goes to that point of how growth stocks, tech stocks, which tend to be more um, benefit, benefit better during a low rate environment. Um, the fact that yields were popping higher really weighed on that um, sector in the technology space. One thing is if you flip the, the Nasdaq onto a daily chart, I think it's really important to just look at context. Um, you know, as much as aggressive a move yesterday, particularly in the, into the closing bell on Wall Street might have felt, if you actually look where we are in the NASDAQ, um, I, I think we could easily come down another 1.5%. And I don't think that is still any grave cause for concern, quite frankly. I mean, that would just bring us back down to the 16,000 psychological level and that kind of route of price action that we had back about 10 days ago in the kind of 11, 12th of November. And even lower down, further support would be seen at 15,750, which at the time would probably feel quite heavy. And I'm sure some of the bears will be salivating somewhat on a 6%, so in excess of 5% pullback. But again, just look at the context of where we're at at the moment. I think um, short term, I still don't detract from the point that, sure, this is a bit of a negative reaction thus far, and we could go even further, but that doesn't make me feel bearish in the slightest at this point for me um, personally. Um, as you would imagine then, in step with just generally some of the um, dollar movement and yield movement. Gold also saw a considerable move lower yesterday. You can see this here from this breakdown in price shortly after the announcement uh, of Powell. And we dropped down to really the $1,800 level where we thrashed out now a double bottom to keep an eye on as far as uh, support for the, the period of consolidation we are now in between 18, kind of 03 and 1812 and a half at the moment. On a daily chart then, uh, just counteracting some of the recent trend that we've had through the month of November thus far uh, and just pulling back down in that area of what was consolidation through the, the latter part of the summer period um, following the Powell announcement. Yeah, so that was the overall take. I mean, other things I'd say I'd mention are, uh, are this. So um, as I've just talked about, traders are now bracing for a more hawkish rate cycle. But one thing I'd say for me um, you know, as the headline suggests, Powell pick seen as positive for risk despite knee-jerk sell-off. And I, I totally agree. Um, I think that um, the dust will settle on this. As I said, even if the Nasdaq sees some further downside short term, I think overall that this is a continuity play and I think the markets will like it. Um, I think Powell has proven to be very consistent with his message and delivering upon that in terms of forward guidance and, and execution of that in a policy perspective. Um, comments out of JP Morgan, they kind of summarize it as Powell's reappointment reduces uncertainty and hence should be a positive for risk assets. Historically, markets try to test new Fed shares and they believe this outcome now will be obviously avoided. Uh, additionally, Powell's experience from the second half of 2018, where policy tightening contributed to a strong market sell-off into year-end, will likely result in a more cautious approach to lift-off next year. So he's had the benefit of experience, is what they're saying, and, and I agree with that. Um, so yeah, overall, I think, uh, personally, I think the move yesterday was um, maybe a little bit overdone. But what I'm saying is that doesn't detract from the point that 
you know, even though the dollar might fade a little bit of the pump yesterday, the directionally, the dollar probably is still going to appreciate over time. Uh, and that being because of that um, central bank policy divergence that we're seeing. I mean, the Fed, are, the Fed are tightening policy for sure in the period ahead, and the ECB are going to remain static. Um, and if we go back to the euro dollar chart, obviously this is when we're looking at a daily continuation. We had that breakdown from 115. It's been fairly um, one directional in a sense, and we're now down to close proximity 40 pips from the 112 handle, which was that bottom end of the price action we had in June of 2020, which is the overall area of target uh, for those more medium term shorts that have been in play, uh, given the expanding divergence of their policy uh, kind of timing at this point in time. All right, some other headlines then to get you up to speed on. Now we're all clear on, on Powell. Um, before I talk about oil, just a quick mention, if you go to amplifyme.com forward slash market hyphen maker, I'll drop the comment in the, the video uh, in the comment section. Uh, you can just put in your email and you'll be automatically added to our distribution list, um, which is a daily email that I put out really short, three, four minute read, but just dissecting, say, a major market topic of the day. And it will also give you access as well, shortcuts to the, the latest podcasts when they hit uh, as well for Apple, Spotify, Google and the rest. So um, do check that out and feel free to subscribe. Um, otherwise, looking at oil, yeah, quite a few comments of late and oil has, we'll bring up the oil chart as well. Oil's seen some significant movement of late. If you look at more short term, Obviously, as we were coming in towards the back end of last week, so this would have been last Friday, um, going into Friday morning, we broke through this kind of trend line, quite heavy selling pressure, and we've remained lower still since that point. We're trading around the 76 handle, just hugging the pivot um, in today's session. On a daily chart, um, or I should, uh, yeah, daily chart first, let's say, um, this is looking at the October-November price action. And actually, if you look at where we've come from, which was around this time a month ago, we have traded down in excess of 10, almost 12.5%. So it's been a meaningful move. Uh, but again, just like the equity market, I think if you look on a weekly bar, so this starts to encapsulate the multi-year picture. And you know, we've just been on such an incredible run since really November of last year. And we've come all the way up to now price back at a level that's been quite key strategically. You can see going all the way back to 2011-12, also 2018, the peak of 2021, um, which really helped exacerbate the kind of power of the breakout that we saw um, in September. We're back down to around those levels. So a little bit of moderation in price. Uh, again, I don't think it's um, too unwarranted and I don't think is too much cause for concern at this point that oil is going to dramatically sell off but all eyes are peeled I mean obviously from a demand side um, COVID is picking up quite rapidly across mainland Europe which is going to impede economic kind of activity and mobility all the way from Germany, Austria, Netherlands, France, Spain, Portugal, Ireland. So the whole euro area is going to be impacted. Case rates in the UK are still to be monitored at this point. And this all obviously coming in the Northern Hemisphere as we go into the winter as well, which typically would lead to potentially a higher degree of case rates with greater um, chance of trans, uh, transmissibility of the virus. Um, but looking at oil overall, what people are talking about then and on the supply side that's going to be very key is what's going to happen with the US. Biden, we know, is under tremendous pressure to try and offset then rising inflation because inflation um, so far, retailers like Walmart, Macy's, Kohl's, we saw their numbers come out last week and they were pretty decent. So there's still demand from the consumer irrespective of heightened inflation currently and rising inflation expectations for the future. Now, that's all well and good that the retailers are performing now and the consumer is kind of making its way through, but that's probably not going to last forever if prices remain this elevated and, and uh, energy prices is a key component of that. And so Biden's been heaping pressure on, as we know, the likes of the Middle East Gulf producers, but also others as well. And so the latest here is that White House officials last night said there's been no decision as yet about the release of oil reserves. And this follows comments we had on Monday that President Biden is set to announce a plan to release reserves from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, the SPR. 
Um, and that could come on Tuesday and be in tandem with the likes of China, India, Japan and South Korea, according to unidentified people familiar with those discussions. Now, a Reuters report has come out overnight and they've talked about a so-called swap from the SPR to be announced today. And under that swap agreement, um, oil companies would take crude oil from stockpiles but are required to then return it or the refined product plus interest. Swaps typically offered when oil companies face a, dis a supply disruption like a pipeline outage or a damage from a hurricane. Outright then just selling from the stockpile is, is much less common. So that's what's being talked about at the moment. Um, to note then, as per this headline on Bloomberg, OPEC delegates said yesterday that the release of millions of barrels from the inventories of the biggest customers is unjustified by current market conditions and that the group, i.e. OPEC plus, so this is namely people like the US, um, sorry, like uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia in particular, um, they might have to reconsider their plans to add more oil production when they meet next week. And just to remind you, remember, OPEC now meet at the moment every month rather than on a six month period as they would do historically. That's because they're adapting to market conditions more frequently because of how fluid the situation economically is under the post kind of pandemic recovery. Uh, and their predetermined path is they're going to return 400,000 barrels per day additional, bringing on new supply, but in a very kind of cautious manner as they monitor developments. And things like you know, mainland Europe, don't forget that many provinces in China at the moment are taking a zero policy lockdown approach. And that also is going to impede the likes of energy um, demand at this point. So there's quite a lot at play there uh, and actuality then uh, we'll keep an eye on things today certainly confirmation of this could well create a little bit of a short-term intraday reaction but the price as you've seen has already kind of repriced from friday dropping again quite substantially to reflect a lot of the things that i've just been talking about um, so yeah it definitely is going to put a strain on some relationships and one of those relationships then flips over to the geopolitical front um, and the Biden administration is reportedly mulling sending military advisors and new weapons to Ukraine. This comes as Russia builds up forces near the border and US officials prepare allies for possibility of another Russian invasion, according to CNN last night. This morning, the US said Russia is close to using energy as a weapon in Europe while it imposed further sanctions related to the Nord Stream 2, with sanctions imposed on Russian-linked entities and its vessel, according to the State Department. So yeah, it's a very complex situation here because this is kind of US-led. I'm sure the likes of Germany would be very much more cautious approach to um, sanctioning of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline because that's one of the things of which Putin's decided to play ball in recent weeks to offset the emerging energy crisis that's being experienced in Europe by opening up the tap and supplying more of which much of mainland Europe is heavily dependent on and then the US are kind of getting quite heavy handed now talking about their military involvement uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, definitely quite a few things to keep an eye on on, on that front. Um, otherwise, in other news, um, just two other small things that aren't massive, but to be aware of, the German coalition is set to announce then that they formed an agreement either today or tomorrow. Uh, Olaf Scholz. The SPD's candidate will be the next chancellor and Christian Lind Lindner, uh, the head of the FDP, is set to be the next finance minister, according to sources close to those talks. And then overnight as well, according to the Global Times newspaper, the kind of state-backed newspaper in China, they've talked about the country is likely to adopt another reserve requirement ratio cut before year end to cope with the economic slowdown, although the loan prime rate is unlikely to change at this point in time so that's the latest okay so quick look at the day ahead and in fact i think we've just had some uh, pmi data hit the tape so the actual french november flash services pmi has just come out now 58.2 versus expected 55.5 so it looks like a pretty firm reading there on the service side for for france um 
just coming to the calendar then, we get the various different PMIs through the morning. So the German figure will follow at 8.30, Eurozone at 9, UK 9.30. We'll get the US version of that at 2.45. Um, and then the weekly oil inventories at 9.30 from the API as normal. From a speaker perspective, Bank of England's Haskell speaks at 11 a.m. this morning. And then you've got the Governor Bailey um, appearing at the House of Lords hearing on central bank digital currencies this afternoon at 3 p.m with ECB's de Guindos speaking in the evening. Um, President Joe Biden is due to speak on the economy inflation um, today, but time to be confirmed at this point. Um, so do look out for that. And then in the fixed income space, the main one is $59 billion in a seven-year note auction, the usual time results due just after 6 p.m. London time. So yeah, just to recap, the services PMI in France just came in at 582 above the expected 55.5 the manufacturing figure 54.6 also stronger than expected um, 53 as well to look out for the german numbers shortly all right that is it let you guys get on with the day take care and i'll see you same time tomorrow